So before we start doing the question, it will be good for us to actually draw a schematic sketch of the diagram. So what we have in this question is we are told that there is a double slit, all right, and then there is a screen, and this screen is 1.2 meter away from the double slit. I'm going to call this big L. And we are told that the distance between the two slits, this D, is equals to 0 0.03 centimeters. Just be careful, we are working in centimeters, so we must actually convert it later. Now, you are also told we observe a second order bright fringe and it's measured 4.5 millimeter from the center line. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit, not draw this to scale so that we can see. But what we have is that we have a center line. I'm going to draw in my center line. And somewhere at here, we're going to observe the second order maximum. Okay. So this is M equals to 2. And you are told that it is actually measured at 4.5 millimeter from the center line. Now, if you compare this 4.5 millimeter, this is what we call Y, correct? This is actually very small with respect to L. So what we would expect also is that this angle here that we have, theta, is actually very, very, very small. All right, so we are able to use the equations that we have derived earlier for Young's double slit. So let's look at the first question. In my first question, what I want is the fringe separation between two neighboring bright fringes that's formed on the screen. So what you want is delta y. Now, if we look at delta y, we know earlier on from our Young's double slit experiment equations that delta y is equals to lambda l over d if theta is very small. However, if you look at it, we do not have lambda. So this equation, it seems at this moment, is not very useful. So what else do we have? Now, for this part, now if you look back at this delta y equals to lambda l over d, you will notice the following things, all right? Um, lambda light, the wavelength of light is actually a constant. L is going to be fixed in this experiment. And also, d is actually a fixed value. So if your angles are small, what you also notice is that the fringe separation is actually going to be a constant. If that's the case, if I draw my intensity pattern along this line, what would it look like? This is my zeroth order. Then this is my second order. Okay, Somewhere here is my first order. And what's a, what is my fringe separation? This is my fringe separation, delta y. This is also my fringe separation. So we can see that in the first part, that 4.5 millimeter corresponds to 2 times of delta y. This will mean that delta y itself is actually equals to 4.5 divided by 2. And that gives us 2.25 millimeter. So that's your first answer. Once we have this, finding the wavelength will be very easy because all we have to do is rearrange this equation. And then what we will have is we'll have lambda equals to delta y times d divided by L. So your delta y is 2.25. In millimeters so I need to convert this so I multiply by 10 to the power minus 3 and then your D D itself given in the question is 0 0.03 cm 0 0.03 times 10 to the power of minus 2 converted to meters and L is 1.2 and with this we will get answer to be 5.62 times 10 to the power of minus 7 meters all right, doing a quick check, we know that visible light is from 400 nanometers to, seven, to 700 nanometers. So this is a reasonable value because this is 562 nanometers. Okay, so that's it.